Okay, we will just jump straight in and get started. I know there'll be a couple more people joining as we go, but we have a good bit to cover this afternoon. So we will just dive straight in. And I'd like to welcome you all here today from a damp county cabin. And um, I am joined by my colleague, Michael McKeown in Moorpark. And our guest speaker this afternoon is Miriam Leshner from all the way over in Germany, who will be sharing with us her experience of rearing pigs with intact tails, the work that she does with farmers over in Germany. So this is our fourth in the series of the Let's Talk Pigs webinar series. All the rest of them are available to view on the um, Chagas website and on YouTube as well. So if you have any questions at all during today's webinar, there is a Q&A tab down the bottom of your screen. Just pop your question in there. Michael is going to filter through them and we will have time at the end to put those questions to Miriam. So without any further ado, Miriam is going to provide a little bit of background on what she does and her experience. No better lady to do so. So I'll pass over now to Miriam and we'll get started. Um, just a moment and hi everybody. Um, I want to start my slide and introduce myself a little bit. I'm from a little Franconia farm and uh, it's not a rich area in Franconia. So when, what does a father do when the daughter wants to ride and he has no money to get a pony? Um, I took uh, the boar. It was Wendelin. And in this time I was heavily infected with a big illness, a chronic disease uh, called swinitis. So since then I am linked to pigs. I love pigs, but I love my farm farmers and my farm job either. And this is a picture of me in a wild boar slaughterhouse. And perhaps you ask why, why we are talking about rearing pigs with intact tails and she is going to wild boars. Because I looked for the tails. I looked for since, since 10 years for tails. And perhaps um, you haven't no, didn't, no, sorry for my wording, my spelling, my first English Zoom, and I can't switch to German. <laughs> it's easier for you when I have some mistakes. Um, I will apologize for it um, in the beginning. So if you have an intact tail, it would look like this, but there are a lot of tails looking like, like this and this. And this is our profession. I'm in a research project with um, Professor Rainer. We are going for systemic inflammation. Why? If you see such tails of the wild boars, we don't call it tail biting. We call it tail lesions. And we are very convinced that it's an inflammation in a necrosis process, not connected to um, tail biting. And when you uh, have a look in conventional farms too, you will see these tails naked with exudation, and crusts or defect lesions with blood running out of the tail tip or even it broke away. Even in straw farms you see, oh perhaps it is not tail biting, it's a lesion with an other origin. And if you want to rear pigs with uh, intact tails, there could be tail biting, yes we know it, but there could be tail lesions because of this syndrome too. Now we have a little um, travel to my experience from the last 10 years. This is a farmer, he sent me 2015 a video uh, via WhatsApp and said, Miriam, I'm so frustrated, I have ill pigs and we have tail biting and I will give up swine production because I tried everything and filled out the checklists and uh, it, it didn't help. And I said, mm -hmm, I think I, you have a problem that tail biting might be one of this, but your problem is much bigger. We have to change your view, yeah? Because there were a lot of signs he didn't recognize what's the problem. This is two years later, he sent me this video. Oh, okay. Here's a pig spark and run. And it was in the afternoon and the pigs are uh, running and playing and it is still the same farm, it's still the same farmer, but we changed everything else like foodstuff, the water supply, the water hygiene and the genetic. So my job is to get the resources, the health resources of the farm 
and get the um, idea what does a farmer needs to make a good job. And I think the human, the farmer, is a key factor in this place. So I don't work with checklists, I work with, with my farmers. Um, when you're uh, filling a checklist, you have a lot of points and you can say, oh, it could be, it could be this, it could be this. And some guys have intu intuition, okay, but we need a strategy. But the most problem in the strategy is that uh, when we look to tail lesions only in tail biting, you see the frog. But do you see the horse? Then just just keep your change your neck and you see the horse with the eyes and the ears and the mouth and the neck and it's much bigger you only see the head of the of the horse so my way is to give a more deep impact of the metabolism of the animals so we can um, make good decisions how do we do that the main point is to understand inflammation. And you, perhaps ever, somebody has seen this uh, tail necrosis in suckling piglets, which, are, which is obviously not tail biting. And we know it comes from inside outside, causing necrosis. And um, in the worst way, the necrotic tail is falling off. Then you have, you must know how, what is a healthy tail? And you must recognize it and understand the development. This is not an infection. This is an inflammation. Inflammation is a natural response of a, to a trigger, like it could be a virus, like COVID-19 is the trigger causing inflammation in blood vessels. It could be endotoxins. This is a main point. It could be a cholesterol, like when you have um, Diabetes, yes, you have a problem with your feet because of inflammation of your blood vessels. And the reaction um, line is always the same. It's reddening, it's swelling, yes, here, reddening and swelling. You have pain. Inflammation is always um, connected to pain. Um, think of if you have a bee, a bee tick from, and you have a reddening, a swelling, a sunburn is a uh, inflammation, and you get overheated because you have a disturbed blood flow and you have a loss of the function like here. This is always the same line and this could happen in the whole body. It could be from triggers outside like a bee or a, a sunburn, but it could be triggered from inside. And then it's running in your whole body in all blood vessels. So um, we are talking about um, the top of an iceberg. You only see the tip, what's uh, um, the top of what's it's going on in the in the body. And when you want to reach uh, long tails in a slaughterhouse, we must go back. You can't interrupt the process of health only at Venus or at Fetinus. Health is a learning system, and it starts from the genetic, from the soul and the boar, so we have to plan it for years. And also the grain quality is important. You know, we have uh, necrosis because of mycotoxins. You start your quality management one and a half year before. And when you're feeding your sows, you have an in utero programming because all mycotoxins and endotoxins go through, pass through the utero into the piglets. After birth, you see the first inflammation wave, like the tail necrosis, we have seen the slide before. But the main biggest point is venous. When the immune system, the, the maternal immune system is down and the own um, immune system is on the rise, we have change of food, we have leakage of water, that is the most sensitive area. And again, if you change the farm, you have transport time, you are change the water system, the food, there could be two, four weeks after transport, there is a next inflammation wave because the body is triggered from um, changes in environment. Um, just on this is inflammation is like fire in the body. Yeah, it's not infection. Infection can cause inflammation, but inflammation is a natural process. So health is a key 
and we must go for the long run. So picnic signals like behavior or symptoms are the best indicator of health. We have a, a golden shiny fewer, yeah? not naked, not exudation, not a shiny skin or a shiny hair. And we need a good body condition. We need um, attention, interest, play behavior, um, belly with a good food intake, yes. And th these pigs are a good basic line for getting intact fat in us. But with this firm, we worked nine years to understand what we are hunting, and it was not tail biting. Tail biting is the end of the process. Health is a deeper, a deeper baseline. And this is um, the in inflammation wave. It's in human, in cows, in pigs, the same. And I will explain it due to the pictures of the ear, because the ears are a pretty, pretty mirror of health of the pigs. If you know what is healthy, you see uh, suckling piglets with a pale skin, with hairs on the on the ear, and you you could only a uh, light line of a vessel. So it's a vein here, yes, a light line. And when you take a good um, FLIR camera, I use FLIR cameras for thermography. You see, there's a warm spot behind the ears, and there's a good blood flow over all the ear, and the the blue line is the hairs it's a shadow of the of the hair of the of the pig if there's a dis disruption like weaning yeah separated from mum is stressed there's cortisol there's a nutrition change you there's a there's new drinking system they have not enough water there's a conflict with other piglets they are fighting there's always a little inflammation wave and it's okay as long as it's it subclinical subclinical so, but it could change in a level to clinical signs. And now you have only in the first week the, the time to interrupt it. Yes, this is a point, the possibility to catch the inflammation. So the symptoms you can see are not breaking the line of compensation and regeneration. And when you know the healthy ear of the left side and compare it to this piglet you see the hair is gone why is there a hair loss yeah the hair fell off why you see the thickened vessel and now you look in the thermography photo the disturbed blood flow the hottest point is now on the tip on the ears so this piglet is um having a big inflammation wave it's visible at the ears and inflammation is on the tip on the ears and it's 39.1 uh, degree hot this piglet has fever yeah fever is a natural response of the immune system and perhaps um, some guys think oh problem is when there's necrosis no this is the end of the line when there's, there was disturbed blood flow and cells are dying. Necrosis is the dying of cells. But the problem is here, yes? And between this and this ear, we have dieses, this compensation and regeneration line limit. So if you want, don't want to have necrosis, you must go here for the wave. And you must know the signals that you are able to break the wave. It's like um, MMA for the sows too, to separate them, to bring them to the farrowing, to have another uh, new food stuff. MMA is an in inflammation wave. And again, a healthy ear and thermography um, picture. This is not this, so uh, it belongs to this ear. And when the necrosis is here, it's it's gone. It's it's the end of the line. It's with this is not a biting mark it's not a scratch it's called punched out lesions it's very typical for vasculitis vasculitis is the inflammation of the of the blood vessels so go to the farm i was called to a farmer here in franconia and he said oh two years i'm fighting your necrosis and he thought he could uh, distract them with play stuff but it wasn't working so 
we have to look more than to the ears. A piglet is more than only the ears. It's only the, the, the top of the, the, the iceberg of the problem. And when you looked, this piglet was this here from in the, in the, in the group. And that I took it out and I found coronet inflammation too. And it was not because of the slatted floor. If you look for the development of coronet inflammation in horses or cows, it's always metabolism. You have an inflammation and necrosis of blood vessels, yeah? Especially when there's more than one leg with this lesion. Then I looked to the signals of the behavior and I saw, oh, they are sick. They put the legs under his, the belly, they lay down, they were sick. And my chem said, oh, there's overheating. There's a fever risk. Take them out and measure fever. Fever. Why is there fever in the pigs? When I look in the, in the, in the corners, um, we see, okay, the, um, the feces, the excrements are okay. They are not they are too dry and you see no one urination spot. Why, why is there no urination? And I checked the drinking system. They didn't drink at the nipples and this was two weeks after weaning. They didn't drink here. They came from a bowl drinking system while suckling and they don't like the drinking system and they learned it not. They drink only at the liquid feeding system so they took the liquid out and there was a rest of food in the system so the sensor says okay there's food in i don't get any liquid feeding here and that's the nasanas the, the biggest problem is a plastic floor pigs need to cool via contact like dogs or mice or cats they can't sweat they must lay down and cool the problem is plastic is isolating. Yeah? You see the uh, factor between metal floor or concrete to plastic. There is no um, ability to get away the warmth, the overheating. And then when you have no contact cooling, you need more water, but they didn't drink. It was warm. Two weeks after weaning without water, it was incredible the problem. And I added a slide because um, it's sometimes uh, a lot of people didn't know that, that we have overheated pigs with very high fever. It's, it's possible that pigs have so high fever and you see the um, isolation on the plastic floor. These piglets stand up and I made an, another picture. And you see the isolation like a brand mark. Yes, it's very hot. There's no contact cooling. What happens in the pig when they are overheating? The, in the gut, the villis are dying. Yes, that's its effect of oxidative stress is leaky gut in, 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 the, in the villis, in cows, in pigs, in humans. And when the leaky gut is running, uh, we have um, a transport of endotoxins into the blood flow because the natural barrier is defect. It is a great research about the Iowa state about this in about humans and cows and pigs. It's always the same. And you need only three days, 30 degrees, like just outside in Franconia, and you have 200% endotoxin in the blood. When you got endotoxin in the blood, the immune system is running high. Ooh, endotoxin, and it's a natural response. Like when you have a sunburn, you get fever because it's an immune system reaction. Yeah? Heat stress is uh, it's known in all species. The inflammation rises also the cortisol level because it, the pig said, oh, I must go and cool and cool, but they can't go out of the plastic floor. There is no cooling, no swallowing. Yeah? And they get angry and bite each other. And fever, I told you, is a sign of inflammation. And it runs on the blood flow disturbance in all small blood vessels, vessels especially uh, when they are uh, far away from the heart, like ear tip or the claws or the tail tip is behind. So um, it's uh, uh, the main problem in my work is um, leaky gut. And when there is an infection like PRRS or other triggers of bacteria or viruses, 
the immune response to endotoxin is higher. Yeah, you know, when there's infection and, and heat stress, the peaks are going up in flames. And when the farmer checked what he is hunting, yeah, here's again to the problem. The piglets don't want to drink from the nipples. And we had too dry liquid feeding and we had a gut health problem. He was able to took the right activities. He lowered the percentage of foodstuff, put in more water. He changed the drinking system. He added not water, but a bowl drinking system. And he added some fiber for gut health. So he is lowering coli and endotoxin load by gut health. And after two weeks, I got this video. Just a moment. It was so nice to see such um, happy and healthy pigs because they play. Play behavior is a championship of health because you can't have inflammation and sickness behavior, like you feeling like getting a flu, or play and having interest. Yeah. So if you see play behavior, especially in the evening in young pigs, you can be, be happy because there can't be any inflammation. And now you see there is more liquid feeding in the foodstuff. Here is a supply of roughage, and here is a new uh, bowl drinkers. He added uh, two more bowl drinkers because he was so happy about the result. Um, because he want he is he is not enough money to change the floor. So, but he must supply more water. Yeah, and add um, roughage and fiber for gut health. I will show you some videos with a thermography camera so you can follow what I'm talking about. If you have healthy pigs, you see a good, uh, good hair, you see a um, good body condition score and not growing different. Yes, it must be equal. And the pigs are, just, just, oh, you know, the pigs are uh, interested and but the ears are up. Yeah, the ears are up, the ears are pale and I can't see the vessels. And this are, uh, piglets are okay. And when I took my thermography camera, you see the ears are off. The ears are blue. They don't need it. They are in balance. Um, I call it a clown face, yes, because we have a warm parts of the pigs and cold parts of the pigs. Like a dog, the snoot is uh, cold. And these this pigs are... Um, in balance and they are healthy enough. Yeah, that's that pigs are okay. Remember the face and the hair and the ears. If there's an inflammation wave coming from the gut, yeah, you can see it in the, in the, in the pigs. Now we look at these pigs. They look full of meat, but they are scratches. They are angry. And you see the eyes oedema, you see the snout oedema. This is a coli endotoxin swelling, yes? You see naked ears, the hair is gone, yeah? The hair is gone, they bite, they are angry, they are in desperate need, yeah? Because they have uh, inflammation in their gut. They want to, to solve it and they have pain. When there's inflammation, there's always pain. And now look at the ears. You see the glowing vessels, yeah? You see the glowing vessels. Um, and I have to say it's, uh, some different videos because I have to take this video and then I have to take this, uh, another, another cam. And you see here the line is very hot. And here, here's a, here tip necrosis. This tip is gone. It's very hot. We have 38 degrees, yes, 39 degrees in my um, thermography cam. So it's very obvious that these pigs are running in a big inflammation. They must need, they need help. And you can't run long tails when you have inflammation in a pigs like this. Because, next one. Look at these pigs and you see the hot ears, the vessels, yeah? You see it and now you see the long tails. And some tails are orange and some tails are bright and hot. And you will see it in the next video, they are biting on a uti sac and it's very important to give them something to chew. It's very important because they will chew 
you will can offer a Utesack or some play stuff or change or rubber um, the, the, the catchhog balls is a, 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 a stuff to chew because in other ways they will take the tails they will chew yeah and in the next step you see the the difference between the pigs between the warm pig and the cool pit here's my mouse yeah you see it and when we look in the, the hind you see this is an inflammation process in a tail reddening swelling overwarming pain yes and it makes the pigs aggressive so if i'm asked if there is um um, necrosis or behavior, remember the key information, systemic inflammation yeah? and sickness behavior starts in the brain first. Before you get the flu and start to cough, you're feeling sick. Yes? Sickness behavior starts in the brain. Systemic inflammation means all blood vessels are um, in, in, um, with inflammatory reaction in the brain too. And inflammation is always connected with pain. They don't feel happy. They feel pain. They want to solve it. And pain lowers the impulse control. It makes aggression because they are suffering. And prevent inflammation could prevent tail biting. Because you can't stop this with play stuff. You must take some um, NSID to bring fever, pain, and inflammation down. You need the veterinarian. To interrupt it. So um, some students sent me pictures and they said, oh Miriam, hi, could I help ask for help? I have a try with long tails, piglets, and overnight, overnight they started biting. And they sent me the picture and I saw the faces of the piglets and I said, oh my god, oh my god, there are so many signs. This is uh, like a hunger delta. The pigs are not in a good body, body condition score. They have um, uh, colored ears. The ears are naked. We can see the vessels. The edema at the eyes, the edema at the nose. It's a high point. And then overnight, then the tail will react. So we had created a poster we called ZINS score about the systemic inflammation. You can see the healthy of the left side, always connected with the green sign. And then you see the rise of the edema at the eyes and the snoot, especially here, the, the high score. You see the hair is gone, the vessel is coming. And to this ear, this tail belongs. So you see the swelling in the tail base. And a blood flow disturbance will bring necrosis to the tail tip. And sometimes it is it's cut, is the tail is up and the tail is down, but I find a lot of pigs with tail tip necrosis with curled tails. But the main point is the feces. The feces is very dark and strong. This teeth, we, we call it colprostase, um, when, the, when the feces is sickened because of water leakage. Yeah, it's a good sign of water leakage in sows and in rearing pigs. And when you have an ear necrosis, you can't, you can't rear intact tails. You must have healthy tail um, pigs. Yeah, so you have a CCP, a critical control point, if you're ready for purpose with your farm to rear it or to say, oh no, um, I will, will work on the health until I'm ready. But if you miss it, it will look like this. And yes, it happens overnight. You have only six to 24 hours. And the tail will get a necrosis because the blood vessels close. Yeah? And this, the tail is dying. So the student was right that this happened overnight, but he missed the signals. These phases um, are not uh, developing within a night. This is a two weeks process with weaning problems. Nipples, uh, bad food stuff, bad body condition score, and, um, and not prepared for, for weaning. So when there is a trial, and you have, oh, sorry, it's just too loud. And I go to a, a farm and the veterinarian and the farmer say, look, look, this is my long tails. Um, don't they look happy? 
and I was I was an alarm. When you see such pigs, they good they showed rooting on a floor. You see the dark tip here, the dark tip at the at the tail. Just I bring it back again. Look at the dark tip here. This is tail necrosis. The tails, yes, they are down. They are swagging their tails. They are um, they are not happy. They are not playing. They are seeking for something. Yeah, it's very dry, very dry, very clean pigs. There's no urination spot on the floor, um, and the pigs came, and you see the, the swelling of the snoot, and they were not happy. Then I went in the in the box. And I am very careful to catch the piglets because I knew they have a metabolism problem and I want, don't want to start it with more stress and cortisol. So I wait for them to come. And when I took a pig, pig off, you see this is a tail tip necrosis. And now imagine you have, you have a finger and you have an inflammation that disturbs the blood flow so that your fingertip is, is getting off and it's bloody and you have an inflammation in your finger. Reddening, swelling, pain. So I'm not wondering why the piglets are shaking their tails. Ha, ah, ooh, ha, ah. there's pain. Yeah, there's pain and they can't bring the tail up because there's pain and inflammation in process. And if you have a Yorkshire piglet or a Duroc, there's more hair, it's difficult to see compared to Pierre Trang. But Pierre Trang has two, three times more um, necrosis than uh, Duroc or um, um, other races. So we um, um, developed the problem because we have uh, Pierre Trang in, in Germany. What, what did we do? We know we have leaky gut and we have a leakage of water, we have no urination, we have fever and how to how to deal with it. You can add um, NSID via foodstuff or water like paracetamol, the aspirin is working, um, or you can make injection, but I didn't want to make an injection. There's a lot of stress when you're running to, a, to this group and I gave an injection to each piglet, so the farmers decided to choose another option. You see, he changed the offering of straw to water, and the water is black because he's offering alfalfa cops. Alfalfa is a very good fiber. And he added charcoal. Um, charcoal is containing humic acid. I hope, hope my pronouncing is right. Humic acid is binding toxins and it's closing leaky gut. And then look to the tails. The tails are smooth, but the pigs in risk are behind. This is sick pigs with fever have a close eye to them, get them up, get, get them painkiller, get them to the water. And when he recognized what the problem is, again, the pigs had drinking bowls and a suckling face, and here were only the bad drinking bowls. I don't like them, you see it in the next slides. And the drinking system, this is stopped all urination. Without urination, there's no detox for the liver. When the liver is not working, nothing is working because it's our big motor for immune system, for detox, um, and it must be cleaned with enough water and um, through the kidneys with urination. So it's to know the change, the steps to get the right um, activities. Okay, he did. He added. The drinking system from the suckling phase, he added to the venus. So the venus could find the same drinking system. Ah, oh, I know it, there's water. They must not learn to find a new drinking system. He was, had started to have a close eye on mycotoxin. He added fiber again, because we have water now in um, more water supply. And he is, has a close eye on foodstuff for gut health with low wheat, low mycotoxin, enough fiber. And then the, he's rearing his own gills. And uh, he, before we had only the small boxes, we doubled it to have more space. 
Um, and here you see a, a dropping, a dropping a pipe with water for the summer and the pigs are dirty. That's okay because the concrete is, is um, wet, wet is cooling, so they have a contact cooling. They have some chains here, but they are distracted to get in to get a, a smooth um, space for feeding. And it's not running every time, but he knows what he is hunting. It was not tail biting, it was only only necrosis. And he said, okay, when I have uh, gills with long tails, then they are a princess in health, so they get to be good sows because there was no negative impact when they are piglets. Yeah? And it's an um, economic question because when you have an immune response, diarrhea is uh, a lot of cost for food efficiency. Respiratory diseases, okay, it's not, not as uh, the op option to have a uh, calving in a farm, but look only to the LPS endotoxin challenge think of heat stress and plastic floor and leakage of water, you have a huge impact of immune system and feed efficiency. Always when you see inflammation symptoms, you're losing money. Yeah? So working on a healthy pig is saving money. It's not about to have the most um, productivity. It's about to have an efficient and stable, uh, resilient eff eff efficiency in uh, your farm when you are looking for a good health, for a good liver, for a good shiny hair uh, and healthy ears. What do the German farmers with cult uh, pigs do? We have a lot of farms with a lot of money from uh, government for model and demonstration farms for cult tails and the most of them buy this machine. This machine is a Roviator and it's a cleaner after storage, before feeding. So it gets the dust out and even the hulls out where the mycotoxin is. It's a non-toxin killer. And it's about 60,000 euros. But if you run a farm with 200 sows, it's paid within a year. Remember, remember this. Remember this impact. So all farmers are happy with this machine. Um, the recommendations for foodstuff are not um, enough for long tails. They were never tried with long tails. So if you have the mycotoxin EU limit, cut it through four, 25% for limit. It's enough for um, the long tails. We kicked out too much wheat. Wheat has ingredients with inflammatory potential. It's not um, gluten, it's a uh, VGA, wheat germ aglinotin. And it's causing allergic, uh, allergic, oh, oh, allergic inflammation potential. So reduce wheat, especially wheat bran, which contains dontoxin also. Have a close eye on feed structure and gastric ulcer. Gastric ulcer is pain, inflammatory and allergic reaction. Um, Relieve metabolism, reduce protein, focus on quality, reduce starch in venous. So the gut is good in, in balance. And add roughage. It's not about um, um, enrichment like, oh, they are bored. They need this for self-medication. They know, oh, I'm, my gut is not good this day. I will take more hay or more straw. So if you have piglets, they are very eager to, to, to eat uh, cobs and hay and straw. This is a, 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 a warning signal, yes? It's a warning signal because why do they need so much fiber? Because the main food is not good enough, yeah? So you have an indicator when they go for um, clays, for uh, zeolites, for bentonites, for hay, there's a need for it. And we know that alfalfa lucerne straw is working best because it's working against inflammatory. Yeah? And we know that uh, Sunderland showed it that fresh, little amounts of fresh, here was a 20 gram straw each day at Venus, it lowered bite marks and tail wounds extremely. And it, this is a very nice solution at our education center. It took the, the stars they chew on 
and put it on a, on a pipe and filled it with um, alfalfa cobs. So they play and root on this floor to get the roughage. And when they are here and, and they are an activity and chewing is end stressing. Yeah, you know, like pupils in a um, school are taking chewing gums, activity can lower stress and cortisol. And it's, it's possible to take, we have a small cutted calf straw or a fifa straw from it's a firm called Hartog in Netherlands. And you can add it in the, norm, in the normal slurry system. So you have not a problem. Long hay is a problem, but small cut it is working. And train the piglets for drinking. And this is a very nice solution in, from Germany with this uh, drinking bowl. And the pig is only 24 hours on in, in the farm and he's able to get water through this um, learning clip. So he bites on the bowl and um, re makes a release of the water. So you must not go to the, to the box and give water every box, yeah, like a gardening a guy. The piglets must learn it by themselves if they have a proper bowl. And there are a lot of differences because when we show, we install the very cheap bowls, they are like boxes or like buckets, they don't like it. They won't, don't put the, the head in this. They always use this one with the um, curved, the curved line. And it's, it's, I can take my thermography camera at this box or at this box, it's always, they prefer this one of drinking system. But we add the suckling drinking bowl in the Venus box also, because they, they are not used to um, use a suckling drinking for five days. They don't change immediately. They say, okay, this one I know, I will drink, and then they have to learn the next step. So we have to make bridges, not breaks. Every break, every change of anything is a problem for the gut, and for the pigs, if they are their baby pigs, they are only four weeks old. They must have to uh, get access to the technic technique they are known. And what's the advantage of this uh, drinking system is um, you can change the, f the uh, water flow without um, um, cutting off the whole line. You can change the flow only by this, is, uh, by, by this tool. So when the pigs are young, you make more water flow and make a little water flow over the drinking bowl because then it's a cleaning effect. So there is no food stuff or manure in it and you can, can switch it when you are controlling the pigs and must not run to the end of the farm and get the water on and get back. I, I've done this so many times before, it's, it's so easy with this system. And we add microclimate, and you need don't need um, a lot of space. It's a, it's, a, it's a question of quality of the space. And you now we look in this one. He added microclima, and also he has a liquid feeding system. He added the drinking bowls at the sides here of the system. And when you look in the thermography video, you see the clown faces. The piglets can choose. When they are cold, they go inside the microclimate, and when they are too warm, they go outside and play. And you see the, um, the nice, cool snoots and cool ears, so he is able to raise um, pigs with intact tails, and you see there's no lesion in the ears. Yeah? The first step is to cut down the ear necrosis, and the next step is then to get a long tail. Okay. Oh, we're getting to the next farm. It's, it's a, a last this photo. Why? This is from Jan Hendrik. And Jan Hendrik was uh, visited by a veterinarian with a big checklist, and the veterinarian said, You are not allowed to rear 
piglets with intact tails because your farm is so bad. But he is in Lower Saxonia, and there's a bonus, a bonus for uh, in very intact tails, and it's about 17, 17, 17, 70 euros each pick. So he was very eager to get it. And he made a space, a second level. And when the pigs, where they are attracted to the other pigs, and this is an area where they sleep and love it, and the activity is uh, upstairs, and the feeding space is downstairs. And now it's rearing 9,000 long-tailed pigs each year, which means he gets 100,000 euros a year, a year. So he was very eager. And it's, it, I don't think it's an option to say to a farmer, uh, you, you are not allowed to rear intact tails, or it's allowed to say, what do you need? What, do we, what, what can we do to help you to make the next step to get it? Because the best ideas come always, always from the farmers. So I help always only to get the right ideas, how to manage it, and the farmers will do it. Um, in this farm, the floor was too loud. So the farmer put um, a plastic foley, foley in here and made concrete in it. And then he um, created a toilet by offering a corner, pigs love corners, at bright light and holes to the neighbor box. And now we have a very small toilet area and a very clean um, concrete area where he can supply, supply some roughage. And this is an island of drinking systems where there's no feces in it. So it's a very calm situation. Also, it's a very old barn. Or here you see it's a, um, the next um, um, room of his farm. He added the concrete here. Here you see the roughage, uh, the feeding space. Um, he added uh, the plastic here because here he took uh, another trick. He brings cold air due to these pipes. And where, when, when there's cold air and light and holes, they manure only, they may do let the ex experiments only in this area. And there's a clean area when, where the foodstuff is. And, um, and so the fast air is not reaching the food area. Yeah? Here's the fast air, the cold air. And this is breaking the wave of the cold uh, air so they can sleep here. So, okay. Oh, and this is uh, funny, especially in heat stress. It's a development of a very, very tricky farmer. Daniel Düsentrieb, we call him. Um, and he developed a, calling a micro wallowing uh, area, like dribbling water, and the piglets love it. It's not running all the time. It's only running one, two, three minutes each hour, but the pigs wait for it. And they love it and they cool their heads. It's, it's our operation organ, it's our computing organ. So it must be cool. And here you can see how cool the, the heads are getting. And in Fedenas, it looks similar. It's only a small pipe with a bit, little bit dropping water. And they wait for it and stand up and get their head in. And you see, when there's cool water on the concrete slatted floor, there's a cool area. So they lay down later on and swallow and cool down. Now the driplets came and they stand up and get their heads um, into the, in the cool water. And it makes a lot of um, lower cortisol level because of the cooling. Okay, um, to have some takeaways. Rearing pigs with long tails is a um, long lasting run. It means a very high health status, but it's worth to work for it. Pigs don't lie. When there's a behavior, they just try to survive and to cope with the environment. To, to, they try to solve the problem. And enrichment means that the pigs can choose 
the best for themselves and you, you can go outside for the harvest because the pigs have all what they need. If they need cooling, if they need roughage, if they need water, it must be in the box so the pigs can balance their own. Space is a matter of space quality. Um, it means that we have proper options to balance health or metabolism. Gut health is our key. Heat stress and water leakage are the big risk factors that we discovered in Germany. Leaky gut and changing gut microbiome will change behavior immediately. I'm talking about minutes, minutes. So when there's a change in behavior, we must go for gut health also. And animals have the ability to, to do a self-medication. So roughage, it's not uh, only to some play stuff, it must work against um, gut problems. So we it, be extremely um, um, aware that what roughage you're offering for which age. Um, play stuff could direct at activity, even when there is a high level of inflammation and they are seeking and they are biting and they want to bite, offer something. So also they would, would take the ears. And genetic is not only determining growth. We have different reaction levels and we have different inflammatory levels. So one is getting ill and the other not with the same food. So and that's my, my last slide and I love it because it comes from, an, from England. Um, it's, I think, rearing curled tails is a, a long lasting work, but sometimes it depends on how, how much motivation you have or support from your, from your consultants and sometimes the right cheese. And so um, I hope I'm in Ireland next year. I missed it this year due to Corona. And uh, thank you for having so much patience for my, my long slides. Thank you. Miriam, thank you very much indeed. I think that was an excellent presentation and you had some really informative nuggets of information there. So I think you've given us all a little bit of food for thought. And on which note, I'm going to pass over to Michael McKeown, who has been keeping an eye on all the questions coming in this afternoon. Yes, Miriam, uh, thank you very much. We have a whole string of questions, so you could be here for the evening. So I'll just try and put some of them together uh, just to speed up things a little bit. And if you could keep your answers fairly short for your own sake, or you'll be here for the weekend. <laughs> um, I have a question from uh, uh, Alberto and, fr and from Ben, so I'll combine the two of them. Is there an effect of breeds is the first part of it and the second part of it is if the parents of the pigs are being stressed uh, by inflammation will that be passed on to the offspring yes it's both um, inflammation is passed to the offspring I can send you some um, abstract about that so this is a part of programming too and it's both if you have cortisol it's programming inflammation reaction or they says LPS or endotoxin load it's programming inflammation so it's very important to start with the source. And the next is uh, about the breeding lines. Mm -hmm. uh, we focus on the breeding lines in Germany and on the boars because it's very easy to change and we have the big problem with the Pietrang. But um, it's a very simple question. How much gills when you buy gills have intact tails? Or why not? Mm -hmm. If you want to buy a, a, a horse that can jump, you look for the parents that they can jump. But yeah. if you buy a guild with a cutted tail, why? Why is it cut it? Is it, you know? You see what, you, I think you, you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And do you see a difference between meat line strains, slaughter line strains, and, and dam line strains? Yes, it's um, clearly because a peer train is a meat line strain. And Pietreng is a very special breed. We have uh, differences in blood parameters, in necrosis, in reaction level to APP in, in several parts. We have a big problem because of lean meat in Germany and um, the other because in Europe is, um, it's, it's not so the problem. Okay. So the farmers with, with cultures take a Europe ball. 
Okay, okay, okay. I have a question from Shane. Um, okay, it's probably going back over. So if you go into a pen with bad ears, what do you suggest should happen? So if, if necrosis hasn't broken out yet, but you feel that, the, that it is going to break out looking at the ears, uh, he mentioned alfalfa, you mentioned alfalfa, charcoal, water, mm. and some aspirin. Does that cover what you would do as an emergency response if you found yeah. so? It's a part of um, our, our PIC signal app that we have separated videos about first aid. The signals, uh, the risk analysis, so the first aid is always um, attraction. Attraction, 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 ropes or the, the rubber, uh, chain has this um, hedgehog plastic mm -hmm. stuff, yeah? Mm -hmm. Give them something to chew, attraction that they don't start biting. And okay. the next step is measuring fever and call the vet. When there's fever, you must talk to the vet and then you can offer a control of the water system and the urination of a water or water with um, vitamin um, ascorbine acid yeah, yep. Yep. something antioxidative, and um, then offer roughage, alfalfa, and we offer clays, okay. leaks. Yes, it's calming down the gut. Okay. Um, Seamus asked, you mentioned the bonus system in, in some parts of Germany. Uh, could you just briefly explain that? Yes, it was a system introduced by um, Lower Saxony they paid the farmers for rearing uh, intact tails, but you got the money only if you have 70% intact tails and you got 70 euros each intact tail. So it was a lot of money, but you had to have, take part of educations and workshops. And it was a great thing because there were hundred thousands of pigs with intact tails. So a lot of farmers join the program and there's a big experience uh, with the breeders, with the veterinarians, with the nutritionists to, to, to take the challenge. So it's a big knowledge um, um, area in Lower Saxonia, but it uh, will be stopped because the EU government said uh, tail dogging is forbidden. You can't pay the farmers for something that's not legal. So the 17 euros a pig is not going to continue then. That's going to finish soon. No. We have okay. that experience, but it's not working anymore. Okay. I have another question from uh, George. And he said, just to clarify, you don't like uh, plastic slatted pens for wieners. So if you were to build a new wiener house, what would you suggest? What would be the ideal? You, you can mix the floor system. You can have like the Switzerland, they have plastic floor, but only 20% of the room. Yeah, And you can mix this with a concrete area for sleeping or a manure area with plastic floor. But you have to um, make options for cooling. And when you have water on concrete, you have a cooling effect not okay. on plastic floor. So you can mix it or make a concrete area so you can use your plastic floor. But plastic floor is cutting contact cooling. It's a problem. Okay. So once you have a different type of flooring in the pen, either either a solid floor with concrete or a, a concrete slats with water coming down in it or something like that, you think that is a good mix? Yeah, and you need enough space because when you have uh, one quadrat meter for uh, cooling, you will not have this in the sleeping area. Yes. You, also, you need a minimum space or sometimes we are doubling boxes that we get more space for the um, enrichment areas. You just mentioned there, uh, just a question for myself. Um, I, I know we're coming up on the hour. You just mentioned there that you have an app. Um, is that accessible in English or, um, or, or is it just in German? Yeah, the app is um, launched in September. I can show you a demo then, and we have a German version, but the, our database has an English version. We are working on that, and we are working on more languages too. You can change okay. the language in the app. So maybe we might get more information and we might mm -hmm. distribute it then on our website then or have a demo of it on our website um, for uh, Irish farmers if you want to check it. I just have, I have two or three people have just asked me about water quality. 
what do you look for water quality in Germany? Uh, is it, so not the flow of water, but actually the quality of the water. Is yeah. that something you do a lot? At? Yeah, that's um, our main profession of my husband and mine is water quality. Right. <laughs> so we look Family for the uh, yeah we we look for the ingredients, especially when there's uh, sulfur sulfur don't know sulfur yep sulfur in yep. it because it's causing diarrhea. Um, okay. And we look for iron and manganese, okay. mangan, mangan, because yep, yep. The iron is a foodstuff of colibacteria. Okay. And there's a lot of um, um, biofilms in, in water lines with iron, and there's a lot of uh, coli problem. And the, do the pigs don't like it, they avoid it. And that's a problem. And we think if you want to offer open water, please install and high, um, high how to uh, hygienization with with chlorine there are several okay. chlorine forms like you are going in a pool there's chlorine because it's the biggest um, health factor for humans since 150 years was chlorination of water and, and is that chlorine um Miriam, just to wash the lines or is it in continuously uh, please add it continuously because when you have biofilms and you kill them, you rise a wave of endotoxin. And okay. if you only put uh, all two, two weeks with chlorination, you rise a biofilm and then you cut it off and then you put an endotoxin load in the pigs. Yes. It's not a good idea. Yes. Okay. So instead of just uh, washing it out and flushing all the, all the biofilm, that we cut. Yeah. and let it in. Okay. Okay. Very good. Perfect. Okay, so we've just gone past the top of the hour, so we have to leave it there. But just to say a huge and sincere thank you to Miriam for joining us this afternoon and sharing with us your experience. And we could definitely listen to you for double the amount of time, but <laughs> look, we must uh, call it a day. But um, another thank you as well to all those who work very hard behind the scenes to allow these uh, webinars to take place. So shout out to Orla Canan, Michelle Laval, and Alison Maloney as well. They've been a huge help to us. Just to let you know, to remind you that all of the previous webinars are available on the Chagas website. You just click under publications, webinars, and then let's talk pics. This webinar will be available early next week um, if you do wish to watch it again or recommend it to somebody as well. So that's all from us today. Again, thank you for joining us and I hope you all have a lovely weekend. Yeah.